Hello, I'm going to talk about a few different uses of shared data which organizations can make use of. We're focusing not only on how the companies can use this data, but also how can they use it responsibly, you know, ethically and legally and focusing on privacy, but also we're focused on for the people who are sharing their data, how is it being used, what is good about it for them, what is bad about it for them. So always be thinking about these um, concepts through the lens of what is good, what is bad, both for individuals, but also organizations. And this is all about you know the fact that modern organizations collect lots and lots and lots of data. And this data is in most cases shared to them by their customers and sometimes also their staff. So somebody uses a website, uses an app, goes into a supermarket. They are sharing data either deliberately or inadvertently with the organization who are running that website, the app, the shop. One of the main ways data is collected and shared by customers is through them buying products or services from an organization. So transactional data is data collected from somebody buying something. That is what the transaction is, right? So you might buy some clothes online. This is genuinely a, a screenshot of my own uh, order history, so you can judge my very exciting outfit. Now, this order was from about a year ago, actually. And ASOS, who I have an account with, have held on to this transaction data for over a year at this point. Because that data is useful for me, they would argue, you know, I can go back and check what I paid, check what I ordered, but also useful for them because holding on to the data allows them to do certain things like personalized marketing. Marketing is about advertising products and trying to sell you more things effectively, right? So maybe ASOS could. Um, realize that I might be buying white shirts for work and so they might give me some emails with some offers on white shirts to try and get me to buy more. Without that data they would have to effectively guess what I wanted, it would be less effective potentially. That's because with lots of data you are able to analyze for trends and figure out well actually somebody my age and my weight and my height tends to buy this item potentially from this brand and so they can perhaps order more stock, they can perhaps target the marketing to particular demographics. They're able to find patterns. If you've got not much data, you can't really analyze very effectively. If you've got lots of data, you can do some quite powerful analysis. And a third example of why a company like ASOS might hold on to my data from my transaction is that it can help speed up the next transaction. So for instance, on ASOS, because I've ordered trousers in the past with um, a certain size, if I try and buy trousers with a different size, it gives me an alert saying your fit assistant size is W32, L32. It's trying to recommend me to buy a particular size because of my past order history. So that's just one example of how potentially the data can be used to speed things up, to make things more accurate potentially the next time a transaction occurs. Other examples might be storing your address on your account, other examples might be storing your financial details on your account just to speed up the next transaction. Obviously the company wants you to buy more things and so if they can speed things up for you by holding on to certain bits of data, they would see that as an advantage. And for you as an individual, you might see it as an advantage as well. Another example which might tie into why you are seeing certain things like your address and account details being stored on websites is that often cookies are being used to collect data about visits to websites in particular. So transactional data could be a website, it could be a physical store potentially, but a cookie is just really on a website. So a cookie in a computing sense of course is just a small data file which is held on the computer either just for the session, by session I mean just when you're visiting the web page. So you go on to dell.com in this example to look up some laptops as I was doing it installs a cookie on your computer only for when you are browsing. Once I close my tab, once I close the browser, the cookie goes. That's what a session cookie is. Other cookies are held persistently. So a persistent cookie is on your computer until you actually delete it. So if you clear the cookies, it will delete it. It might say it expires in 1970. That was the start of um, what we call the epoch, which is used by programmers to leave things going forever effectively. So some cookies will only go once you actually delete them. Now in terms of what cookies do, often they're used to 
track things like what you've put in your basket. They can track things like what you visited, your recent history. They can ensure you stay logged in when you close your browser, for example. So often they're used to speed things up and also to personalize your experience. And generally, visitors to websites like things being personal to them because it can speed things up and it makes it seem a little bit more user-friendly. You know, if you had to sign into every single website every single time you visited, that would be quite annoying. It holding on to your account details is a useful thing, generally speaking. But cookies can be annoying. You know, legally nowadays they have to inform you. You get a big message saying, will you accept the cookies? That can be a bit annoying, um, but that is a good thing for your protection. But even so, some websites use lots and lots and lots of cookies. Dell, for example, uses 260. What on earth are they, are they doing with 260? I've got no idea. It's so many, it just doesn't really make sense. So definitely cookies can be overused and be seen as an invasion of privacy if it seems like every single one of your details is being tracked all the time. Another couple of quicker examples of data which might get collected includes things like location-based data. So information about where you are actually located. So for example, an app might use GPS to give you specific recommendations based on where you are. It could be things like your IP address tells a website where you are located, at least in terms of your country. So for example here, if I go to amazon.com, the American version of Amazon, it says, without me even doing anything, to deliver to the UK, because it can see I've got an IP address based in the UK. So it allows that slightly more personalized feel and potentially speeds things up. But again, equally you might feel uncomfortable if you feel like you're being tracked with something like GPS or your cellular data. And a final slightly larger point about how data is used by many organizations is that data is often exchanged between different services. So one company might exchange data on their customers to another company. Often this is where you've got sort of sister companies where one company owns other companies. So for example, Facebook, I'm sure share a lot of data from Facebook users with their other companies, WhatsApp and Instagram, which just enables them to have access to a much bigger data set because not every WhatsApp user uses Facebook or uses Instagram, for example. And so exchanging the data between the services enables Facebook to have much more data to analyze. So potentially this might help them with identifying trends because they've got much more data to sift through. But this can be uncomfortable to lots of people knowing that their data for one company might be being shared with other companies without them knowing necessarily. And this might be uncomfortable because it could be seen as a security risk. You sort of, you, you then don't really know who has got access to your data. It could get lost or could be leaked if there was bad security. But also it's a privacy concern. If you're not sure where your data is really, that may make you feel a bit invaded and not very happy with the company who is collecting it in the first place. So for all of these four examples of shared data being used, you need to be able to think about what are good things, what are bad things, both for the organization and also for the customers. And we'll talk more in future videos about the legal implications, which are important. For now, thinking ethically, generally customers like things being speeded up and made personal, but ultimately it can feel uncomfortable being tracked and having too much data being used because that's not good for our privacy.